a pleasant good morning to you. Happy Sabbath, one and all. We want to welcome you back to Northwest State Sabbath School panel. We do pray you've had a wonderful week, such as we have had. And I pray as God's grace and God's mercy continues towards us, that we continue to look upwards and that we look to Christ knowing that he's coming home for us. Today we are looking at this, this subtopic as we look into the Psalms, singing the Lord's song in a strange land. Let me repeat that one more time. Singing the Lord's song. Whose song? The Lord's, the Lord's song, song in a strange land. So we're going to dive into this topic here today. Prayerfully, you'll be blessed by what you will hear. To my right, as I introduce my panel to you, no strangers to your left and to your right, we have our elder, Michael Felix. Would you like to say good morning to the good panel? Good morning. To the crew? Good morning and a happy Sabbath. And welcome to our 208th broadcast. <laughs> yeah, you've been keeping count. We All have right. been doing this um, for four years, going to five years now. Wow, so, yeah. praise God. Thanks for that tidbit. 208 broadcasts. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. To my left, our elder, Patrick James. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath and welcome to another lesson study. Again, I want to just, uh, just say a happy Sabbath to the YouTubers out there that are watching and listening and for those of you on Facebook as well. And for those of you in the audience, we're always glad for your faithfulness. I said that a little early before we started. Um, I always keep track. I watch. I see what's going on. And I, know, I always notice that I'm observant of you know, the faithfulness of you all that show up here. So thank you so much for that. Let's begin with a, a word of prayer. I will ask... Elder Felix. Sure. Please. Let's pray. <laughs> Gracious loving Father, we thank you, dear God, for this opportunity that we can come and open your word on your Sabbath day in the house of the Lord. How much more better can it get? And so, Father, we pray that your spirit will descend upon this location, upon this forum. And as we study the Psalms today, we will glean so much truth from it that hopefully the intent is that we walk away feeling more uh, prepared to deal with the issues of the day. So, Father, we thank you for such an opportunity like this. Bless everyone who is on their way. Bless those here in the sanctuary, and especially those online who have faithfully been listeners to this program. And so we thank you, God, for your mercy, your grace, and your love. We ask all of these things in the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen. 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 And prayerfully, one day soon, we will be singing... But we'll be singing the song of Moses, that song of victory. Amen. 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 We, as we are live on YouTube, we do invite you, if you do have questions, you have a comment you would like to share, um, please, you know, put it in the chat room. Um, Elder Felix or I will be monitoring the chat room from time to time. We would love to share your comment. Uh, we'd love to answer your question if time allows, if time permits. For those of you that are in the audience, if you have a question, you have a comment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand nice and high. A mic will be brought to you, so um, you'll be able to share and participate in the Sabbath School lesson. I will ask you, if you do have a comment or something you'd like to share, uh, make sure you keep it brief, because each panelist ha does have um, a study and, and a part of a day they would like to share with you, and, but we also want to hear from you. So we ask you to keep it brief, keep it short, and, and we'd like to make sure that you, you are heard as well. Okay, so let's begin. So I, as I mentioned, we're, we're in this subtopic, singing the Lord's song in a strange land. So the, one of the key things, I try to find key things in the text or in the memory text. What I notice too, I, I try to put myself in that position. And why is, it, why is David um, exclaiming this, you know, in Psalms 137? So I say to myself, okay, they're in exile, right? Out of Israel, they're on their way um, in Babylon, um, exile there. Things are tough. Things are hard. There's adversity. Now, God is asking you to sing his song, singing the Lord's song, because this place is not home to them, right? Jerusalem. So what am I telling you here as we open here? Physical Israel went through adversity, right? And that was physical Israel, or I should say literal Israel. So as we go through the lessons today and we go through each day, I want you to understand it through spiritual Israel, which is us now, right? So the battle now is here with the mind. doesn't mean that we don't go through physical issues in life. We do. <clears throat> but more so, God is trying to change the intellect, trying to change the mind, to have more of a mind of Christ. So when this Holy Spirit was poured out to us, you know, and we became spiritual Israel, 
God is saying, hey, work on this. So through your hardship, through the tough times that we're going to go through, sing that song of music. Go through the Psalms. Understand that this is what they have gone through too. And that's going to help you. That's going to help that battle of Armageddon, so to speak, upstairs. Because a lot of times there's physical murmuring, but there's spiritual murmuring too within ourselves, within our heart. So this is how um, at some point we mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier about we will sing that song of victory. We'll sing that song of Moses. So, but yet this is a strange thing. To be honest with yourself, being enslaved in a strange area, and now you want to sing. Remember, the song is of joy. The song is of happiness. The song is also a foregleam of victory because God has already told them that, you know, and gave a lot of days that, hey, they will be there, but then they will, they will go back to their land. Mm-hmm. But that's got to be a difficult thing. I, I, I think, and I remember I'm speaking through the fall in human nature. You know, I'm sitting up here and I'm saying, let's be honest, that's a difficult thing. But yet, you know, we're told to do it. The, um, like, the, the story behind this, this, this text, this psalm, and, and forgive me if I give out my age, but as a young man, <laughs> I remember listening to that song yes. by Bonnie M. out of Europe, by the rivers of Babylon. I never understood what it meant. It was just a very nice tune. Um, but when you, when you, now that you've studied the history behind it, these were folks in captivity, under duress, in, in conditions not suitable and not familiar to them. And here their captures are saying, why don't you sing us one of those joyful songs that, of, of Zion, of Babylon, I'm sorry, of um, Jerusalem, the songs that, that, that you normally sing. And they're saying, but how can we do this? This is not home. This is, this is not the condition, because these are songs of celebration, songs of joy. He says, but how can I, how are you asking me to do something that's impossible and, and coming to our day? We're here now, we're seeing the, the, the design of disaster around us, and we are told that we should sing a, a, a song. And, and so it, it's, it's not bewildering, but it's, it's hard. No, it's hard. To, but to sing a song of celebration in the environment that we live in today, where, you know, it's the sin and death and destruction is all around us. But yet, we are to sing this celeb- celebratory song. You, you got your finger up. I don't know if you were... <laughs> yes. I, I don't know um, if you were just telling me to keep no. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, just in, 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 um, in line with what you're saying. And looking at it, was that really a genuine request of their captors? Or was that mocking? We, you know, look, 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 looking at it, you know, I'm wondering, was it, you know, were they really making light of their God? Because their God, you, you are powerful by your God, right? And they were no captives. Very well could and have been. Their, their God cannot be seen, right? And I think that's what the lesson is right, that's around, right? The so mocking it, of God's it, people. It, you know, so, yeah, yeah I, 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 and that's a good point you brought up too. I, I, I want to say this, right? There's something about singing. You guys know that. Yes. God knows what He's doing. There's something about singing, because I don't care if, if you're in the shower, if you're alone, or even when you go through tough, tough times. There's endorphins. God created us. There are things that are released that almost allows you to forget the hardship or whatever sting that you're going through. Mm -hmm. And singing helps. You know, if you look at the captives that came to America through slavery, it came a point when hardship was so tough. What did they revert to? What did they go to? Ancestral songs. Songs. God designed us and he understands. Listen, they sing in, in heaven. Why? Why? You know what I mean? Why do they sing? That God is the creator of even of the angels. And they're the ones who sing and give adoration to who? To God. To God. So God in this title says, singing the Lord's song. We today, God is no different in, in, in the way he does things. God does not change. We sing an adoration to him, and he pours out to us and releases the anxieties that we go through. But you find that through the end all of the theme of, of the scriptures that we read in whatever situation that's going on, David, mm-hmm. and he's, we find the end all is, is after they sing, after this, you know, there is some type of release. 
You know, let me add this one, this one note too. Yes, God allows us to have those moments when things are tough and we, and we, we have that complaining session or whatever, why, you know, all this. But that should become less and less and less as you grow and closer to Christ. Because that's also a measure of your faith, friends. It's a measure of your faith, you know? Soon, there'll become a time and a point where Satan will have nothing in you. As Christ said in the wilderness, he has nothing in me. In other words, what? Nothing to tempt. I am hungry. I could, be, I could call down angels to come get me. You know what I mean? I could turn that stone into bread. I can do it. But none of the temptations will cause me to be moved anymore. You know who will have that experience? The 144,000. They will have the very same experience. We will go through those tests and those trials, even Satan coming down from um, and, and, and appearing as Christ, and we shall not be moved. No more temptation befalls us. Why? We put aside the complaining. We put aside the distrust. We look unto Jesus. And that's the theme of what we're reading uh, throughout the week. These are the things where God wants us he wants his nature to be accomplished in us. Let's look. The lesson says this um, in Psalms 137, verse 4. How, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The strange land is everything that we're going through in this earth. This earth was not to be this way. As sin corrupts the world more and more, the earth has increasingly become what? A strange land or a strange earth to us, to God's people, to here at Northwest State. This reality creates a problem for the psalmist. How does one live a life of faith in a strange land? And this is how our faith increases. There, we don't know it, but every time you go through something, God is building your faith. Yes. He's building your character. And you're able to withstand the fiery trials that's coming to you in the future if you put on that armor. But a lot of us don't put on the armor. The last thing we do is put on the armor. We put on the mouthpiece and complain. No different than ancient Israel. And we forget all the wonderful things God has done for us in the past. This is why we have to put away those, those, those areas of our life. And then usually, I think if you look in the mirror and you look at yourself prayerfully, <coughs> you'll realize, you know what? I am climbing that ladder. I am becoming, uh, climbing up Jacob's ladder, so to speak. Can you imagine that suffering slaves dealing with the adversity that they're going through should be prepared to sing songs of what? Joy and songs of gratefulness. Can you imagine that? that, that that's a tough thought. You know, I, I like to keep it real. It's a tough thought. Or that we can frame our minds around, our, our minds in the land where we are in slavery. We are in exiles. To sing those songs that, which recount the mercies of God unto us in our old flourishing country. God pulls me out of the land of milk and honey and sends me to be an exile, to be a slave, to go through hardship. Oh, you know what, um, gentlemen here in, in the audience, and we're going to make you eunuchs. Now go sing some songs of joy and gratefulness. Hmm. That's, that, that, that's what I'm going to say. You know, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. What is God doing? You know, what is he doing? So Israel in Babylon, Israel in Babylon, God's people, right? They foresaw a day through the songs. Hello? Through the songs, they exclaimed, they, they foresaw a day of redemption. They had all have a choice. They're backed up against the wall. Their only leader is God now. You know? Or, oh Lord, just take my life. So they foresaw a day of redemption. And so should us, Northwest Dade, SDA, brothers and sisters. Um, that's how we should see, we are the church. That's how we should see um, things of the future where God has brought redemption to us. In other words, there'll be a day there's going to be something called the church triumphant. We're, church, we're the church militant at this point. But we'll be the church triumphant. And her enemies, our enemies, 
and will deal with the justice of God. That's what he's promised us. How long, O Lord? Right? We can go to Revelation 6. How long, O Lord, will you avenge our blood? Yes. Those circumstances that we go through should make us forget the promises God has given to those that love him. Did the patriarchs feel that way? Did they see a better country for them? Anyone, anyone know a scripture that, that we can go to? Um, I'm going to look online, anybody here in the audience, that we can go to where the patriarchs saw a better country? That, that God had told us, yeah, that as it happened to them, we were reminded, uh, I'm going to say we were reminded by the Apostle Paul in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11. He told us that. He shared, he shared with us that. Hebrews 11.3. Hebrews 11.3. It says, these all died in faith. Who are the these? These were Enoch. This was Moses. This was Sarah. This was Abraham. And we can go down. There were a bunch of names written down in the champions of faith. Here's what it says. These all died in what? Faith. Hebrews 11.3. Not received the promises. Right? So the promises was a restored earth according to Abraham. The promise came to Abraham. Stars, your descendants of the star, and they will recompense us. So that's the promise. So I want to give the context of the promise, right? Because sometimes we'll say we don't understand what that means. But having seen them, what? Afar off. This is how ancient Israel, they continue to see it that, that way. Do we continue to see it that way? Or are we continuing to complain? And they were persuaded of them, and guess what? Embraced it, embraced them. And confess that they were strangers and pilgrims of the earth. I'm going to ask you the question. Do you feel that you're a stranger here? Are you homesick? Mm -hmm. Do you want to go back home? We don't belong here anymore. The entertainments and all these things are really a distraction. Or are we entertained by the distractions? Which one is it? Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we have to ask ourselves. What's going on with me, Lord? Am I there? Am I going to have the milk and honey? Am I going to make it in? And if you're worried and you're puzzled, you need to bend down on your knees, as they did, and went to prayer and sing those songs. You know, it does something for your soul. And I think that is, is one of the things, as I'm, I'm trying to merge Saturday and Sunday together, these are the, one of the things that, that does help us in life. Go ahead. The, um, the reality of the situation is that Ancient Israel had a history, they had evidence, and, and so they were able to reflect back on where, what God had taken them through. Um, but when we bring it into a, 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 a context of today, when young people look around them today, where are the examples? When they look at the world today, all mm. they see are the, the evil, pro, um, not just increasing but it, it seems that the attraction evil has now become an attraction it's yes. encompassing. And when i say evil it's I'm, encompassing. I'm, yeah it's yeah i'm using it as a broad term mm -hmm. in other words everything that is not godlike yeah that's a better probably way to put it <coughs> seems to be the attraction the lure that draws them into the evidence and the, the things of the world today and so for a young person looking at the world and saying well the same thing with the psalmist why is this happening when I am supposed to, my life is supposed to be going in a particular direction? And, and this is what I would like to do. Reminds me of Paul, that struggle that, that he continually has. But the young person today is saying, when I look around me, those people are prospering. They have all the, the mm. good cars, the, the, the nice houses, and the, they're on social media, whether that life is real or not. But social media has been the attraction for young people today. And you find people post a lifestyle out there that may not even represent their true lifestyle, but still it's glamorous. They make it look so enticing that you can get, you can dress fancy, you can have all the nice things of life. And it, it's an attraction to them. How do you get that person now to stay away from that? And it's true. How can that young person sing the Lord's song in an environment like this when everything around them entirely the entire world is celebrating yeah. that which is opposite to God yeah. how does that young person now refocus and say okay where do I find my bearing how do I where where does my compass point how 
How do I reconnect with God and sing that song? And it points back to some kind of, I can call it evangelism, because that's what it really is. But that is a struggle for young people today, and I've heard it from the mouths of some of my own children, Mm -hmm. who said, why are these people, I'm struggling here to make it, and these people are just prospering, man, and they've got, because their focus is on the niceties of the world. Well, How do you pull that person back, that young person, not somebody who is steeped or theologically, but how do you pull that struggling person, the young person back and say, hey, refocus here. Let us look at what God has done for you in the past and where he has brought you, maybe your parents. I, I, I think we have something to do with this as adults because yeah. how do we measure success? We're, we're grooming our children and we, um, we, 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 we push them to, to strive for excellence, to succeed at whatever they do. And this is how the world measures success. And this is the world that they are living in. And so, you know, they become competitive and everybody wants the best. And like you mentioned, we are living in a social media world now where everybody wants to be an influencer. And everything that he or she does, it's out there. And, you know, our children in the church, that is what they are gravitating to because this is how they see success. So, um, and it stems your, from your, us. Yes, it's, it stems from us. Is how do we, um, what do we, what, what do we make priority in their lives? Yeah. You know, <coughs> how do we push yeah. education and success? Yeah. I, I, I love. Well, is you a young parent? Yeah. I, I, How do you I love manage his, I love his answer, I, and I also love the question, too. So, what's the question? How, what? Well, there's so many questions. <laughs> no, you, no, you just but how, does, how, do, how do you get a young person to, to yeah. redirect, re, re, re. So, so here, to refocus? I, I, because listen. we've we've given them the idea, well, you need to get the, the education, and you need to get a good job, and then you'll get the great house, and the, the two cars, and then the picket fence. And right. We've listed success right. as the world sees it, but we in no way in that... In that equation, have we I, said, seek ye the Lord first? I think from the, from the parent's perspective, we, we fall to this place where we have to trust in God, right? Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they grow old, they won't depart. So we have to claim scripture, right? We claim promises, but we also claim the word of God. It's a proverb. I think my duty now, as this question being directed to me, is I remember I did everything I could and whatever light that I received at that time, raising them up. And I did it to the best of my ability, right? Um, did I have issues up and down? And did it, was I learning on the fly? And, and did I maybe have some issues, maybe some anger? You know what I mean? As you're learning all this. But I followed me and said, God, I did all that I could. It's my turn now, Lord, to trust in you. And it's your turn to deliver in the promises that you gave. That's why we don't stop praying, right? And here's the interesting thing to your question. It's the work of the Holy Spirit, because for those kids out there that see the world's an attraction, so, and, and so on, right? And it was, I think it was a great statement that you made, because it's the reality. When we trust in God, and we exercise that faith in God, we remember everything you did for your kids, everything that you tried your best. We set a foundation. That foundation, we are told in Scripture, is a rock. It is true. So that's why we claim those promises, because God in his perfect timing, because when the Holy Spirit touches a heart, he will change their thoughts. Those thoughts of why do they have this? Why do they have those fancy? Here I am struggling. You watch that child change his mind. That's the prayer, that, they, that God changes their mind. Well, we have to continue to pray and trust that God will do it. That's my prayer, because I see the world yeah. I don't want to um, take away from the lesson too much, but Mike, it's a but very, it's a, lesson, yeah, it's yeah, a very, in, is... it's a very interesting topic, right? I'm yeah. sitting here, I'm thinking, if we really believe this, <laughs> today we have Watja here, right? Um, why don't we send our children, or as some day Adventist Christians, why don't we embrace Christian education? We choose to send our children. <laughs> to the other schools where they're taught by um, secular. secular people. And these curriculum. are curriculum. Yeah. And these teachers are the ones that influences them. Right, right. And then, you know, the problem comes back home to us. 
so you know it leaves us yep. to yep. really yep. make a decision yep. Yep. as to what is most but, but even even christian education is not perfect it has no. its, its flaws yes i think it comes back to what you originally said the home. parenting the home the home it's always going it to be the home it's always going to be the home yeah you know and it, the christian education of course i'm not knocking it it's mm -hmm. a, it's a great thing it's as a matter of fact, my personal opinion, I think the church should make Christian education free for all children. Hey, I give, think so. Let me give you a little fist bump. Let me give you a fist bump for that one. It's there you expensive. Go. There you go. Yes. Yes. It's, yes. it's costly. Yep. Yep. And so for that yep. to happen, we have to support the educational system that the church has. Absolutely. And if we don't support it, then it... it it goes through the same struggles like the regular education system does. Yes. And of course, not being supported by a governmental structure, it, 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 it fails in certain areas because it yeah. doesn't have the support it should have. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I think personally, Christian education should be right there with evangelism. Amen. It should be free Amen. for all children who are of the, the back, Christian Only background. at Northwest Day do you hear a statement like that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I hope I'm not so I, I, I want to share really with you um, from that I may know him, page 185. Again, this is why we are to sing certain songs. It says, quoted here, when those who love God are tempted, let them sing praises of their creator rather than speak words of accusing or fault finding. Mm. You read that again. When those who love <laughs> God are tempted. Mm, when, I... when those who love God. Again, that's only if you love God. So mm -hmm. usually if you don't love God, you, you won't. Think about what it's saying. When those who love God are tempted. Let them sing the praises of their creator. Rather than speak words of accusing or fault finding. The Lord will bless those who thus try to make peace. Trust in God. Mm. Be careful not to give the enemy any advantage by your unguarded words. Keep looking to Jesus. He is our strength. Amen. Mm -hmm. That is a good <coughs> admonition to every saint that's out there. When the trials come, sing those songs. Sing praises to him. Pray praises to him. Yeah, Ace, uh, before you, um, I know you're combining both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, in um, Psalm 79, I think it's verse 10, right? Uh, when, um, I think, yeah, oh, yeah, it says, Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants, which is shed. Just um, like they were asking then, Where is their God? Us as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, are we allowing people around us to ask, where is our God? Are we, are, or are we showing them the true and living God? Right. We are lights in this world. Amen. Amen. I, 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 you comment? Let's go. Yeah, comment. Grab the mic. Grab the mic. Grab the mic. Thank you. Thank you. I, you just said it. We are light in the world. The, the way I saw the lesson was that God or Christ himself is light. And we know without Christ, then the world would be and is in darkness. Because they're in darkness, then they don't know the love of God to make it be transcendent to human beings, the rest of us. If we are in darkness, then we don't understand the workings of God. And God has done so much in the dark with us and for us. And then also by his example when he was crucified, God himself was in the darkness reconciling to himself this world because we were sinful and his son was uh, agonizing for us. So that's the first thing. The world is in darkness because they don't know God. Right. Secondly, God sees in the darkness. We can't. We, by faith, we can accept Enough and everything else that the Lord teaches. But at the end of the day, we can't see into tomorrow. And the Lord has done so much mighty workings in the dark in terms of evidences of what he has done. Amen. By night, I'm leading the children of Israel as an example, as a, a, a pillar, a cloud of fire. A pillar of fire. Yes. And then, so the second point is first, 
He is light. Secondly, we cannot see in the darkness, so we don't even know how to trust God. And then thirdly, if we are seeking the Lord, one day we will see the light. And if we are light, or reflectors of Christ's light, then everyone we come in contact with, I pray, should be able to see that light radiating through Amen. us. Amen. 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 Something to consider, something to think about, piggybacking our dear uh, sister evangelist. Think of characteristics. Everything is about vindicating character of God. This, this is what it really boils down to. Think of, think of the character of Lucifer prior to, his, prior to the Four. fall here on earth. Okay? Gossiper, complaining, and distrust. Gossiping, a trafficker, the scripture, the scripture says, that's gossiping. Mm -hmm. Complained, and there was distrust. That's a Luciferian character. Think of the tribe of Dan. Why is the tribe of Dan not in the spiritual tribes of Israel? Gossiping, right? backbiter. Be careful you have developed a Luciferian character. Because the reality is this. When you distrust, when you are complaining nonstop, and when you are backbiting and gossiping, you're taking on the character of whom? Lucifer. Who will not inherit life. Right? It's just something to piggyback on, on what you're saying. We are to be light bearers in this world. All right? When we seem to doubt God's love and distrust his promises, we dishonor him and grieve the Holy Spirit. This was quoted from Steps to Christ. I want to read on a little bit more. Okay, Steps to Christ pages, for those of you that take notes, page 118 and 119. I thought this was powerful. When Satan tempts you, breathe not a word of doubt or darkness. Right, Sister Foster? This is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If you choose to open the door to his suggestions, your mind will be filled with distrust and rebellious questioning. We've all been there. Let's keep it real. If you talk about your feelings, every doubt you express not only reacts upon yourself, but it is a seed that will germinate and bear fruit in the life of others. You're bringing darkness to others by your uh, complaining, your 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 approach, your, your, your constant um, negative mind, right? And then she says, but it is a seed that will germinate and bear fruit in the life of others, and it may be impossible. I thought this was a strong point. It may be impossible to counteract the influences of your words. In other words, you may have sealed somebody else to doubt God yes. because you're saying you're a Christian, and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and all you do is complain. That's what she's saying. Your words have power. You yourself may be able to recover from the season of your temptation mm -hmm. and from the snare of Satan, but others who may have been swayed by your influence may not be able to escape from the unbelief you have suggested. Brothers and sisters, God has called you to a great place in your life and a great lot where he is expecting you to be a light bearer, not a light destroyer. Amen. You can come to church, you can come to Sabbath school, you can take part in this ministry and do all that. You can become an elder, a deacon, a deaconess, and you can do all that. But your character, if it doesn't bear fruit, you're thwarting the salvation of others. That's what this is saying. How important that we may speak only those things that will give spiritual strength. We talk about spiritual, spiritual strength and life. All have trials. We all have griefs hard to bear, temptations hard to resist. Do not tell your troubles to your fellow mortals, but carry everything to God in what? Prayer. Prayer. Make it a rule never to utter one word of doubt or discouragement. You can do much to brighten the life of others and strengthen their efforts by words of hope and holy cheer. Steps to Christ, pages 118, 119. Amen. I don't know about you guys. Amen. I thought that was Amen. very, very powerful. Yes. Very, very powerful. And as we, we look at that, we contemplate that, we do realize there are days of evil because it's all around us. 
We're surrounded by death. You're going to talk about that. They're, they're, the, these things are sneers to us. But yet, he's expecting, he's expecting us to yet sing songs unto the Lord, even though we're living in a strange atmosphere in the land of our own homes, the land of our own work, the land we're struggling, we lost our job, we need a job. These things are the strange lands of our life. The relationship has fallen apart again. These are strange lands that's surrounding us. I mean, the land is the lot that, that Satan is attacking in our own atmosphere, in our own environment. However more important that the restoration of Israel's fortunes is the defense of God's character in the world, However, more important than the restoration of Israel's fortune is the defense of God's character in the world. Okay, said it a little bit better there. That's Psalm 79. Nine. If evil actions of the nation go unpunished, it will appear that God has lost his power. Only when, we, only when God saves his people will his name be justified and uplifted. Now, this was the statement in... in um, Sunday's lesson and we seem to lose sight that we are vindicating the character of God through our lives through the trials you know what did Paul say when when he had to deal with his his affliction the reality is whatever the affliction was maybe it was maybe his eyes were messed up and maybe he can maybe he could still he could see but partially we don't know we don't know right but whatever it was, he realized, let the affliction stay and the hardship stay because God will get more of the glory that was able to, to endure to the end with the one leg, with the one eye, with the blindness, with the dumbness, with the rags, you know, with the, whatever it, it befalls me, God will get the glory. The young man who was blind from born, wasn't his mother, wasn't father caused this, it was so God will get the glory. Let's not lose sight of that at times. As today, the same principle existed back then. Our sins, our backsliding, our evils can be disrepute, not only on ourselves, but worse, on the God whom name we profess. Yes. What is the third commandment, friends? What's the third commandment? Anybody? Honoring God. Do not take the Lord thy God's name in Fame. vain. You say you're a follower of me and yet you act like that. No, you're a follower of Satan. But it's, it's interesting that um, in the study, this, and I don't know if it's on Monday's lesson or Tuesday, <coughs> um, you know, I think Tuesday, where is God? Oh, yeah. And it is because of, as you said, it's because of our behavior why God's reputation is now being questioned <coughs> or his, his, his deeds, his acts are being questioned. And I like the way that the, um, the author has kind of pieced this study together. And it's as if we're saying, hey, God, I mean, I know we messed up, but you can't keep us out here lang languish languishing sorry, for so long because your, your reputation is at stake. What will they say about you? We see that with Moses and there's so many examples in Scripture. But it, it's as if we're, we're trying to negotiate our way out of the situation that we created. It is because of our stubbornness, our stiff-neckedness yeah. that... We have brought God's name to disrepute. We have some ancient Israel in us. And, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a responsibility now. Yes. You know, and, and hindsight, in hindsight, we have a responsibility to, to sing God's song. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not just, it, it's, I, I found that the word in sing the Lord's song, it's not just to sing a song. It's a, it's a, a character. Yeah. It's a behavior. Yeah. It's, right. It's who we are. And so, it, I, yeah. I think like, you'll, like you'll probably like speak Yeah, like Sister yeah. Foster said. We, we need to let the light shine yeah. in, the, in this dark yeah. world. You know, how do we let the light shine? Yeah. You know? It's for our lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. I know I've got to pass this over soon. I'll, I'll finish up these last couple of statements here. It says, our wrong actions can have detrimental spiritual effects on our witness and mission as well. How many people have been turned off to our faith by the actions of those professing the name of Christ? And we see that too. A lot of people get on their ink horns, on, on the side of the streets. You're going to burn in hell. You this, you that. If you, you know what I mean? And, and they give a wrong, yeah, this one has a comment. They give a wrong expression of the God that we serve. In Desire of Ages, uh, it says, the honor of God and the honor of Christ is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. I'm going to say it one more time. 
the honor of God, the honor of Christ is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. You, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so we, I just want us to bring the lesson home to apply it to us and our lives and not the general net as to the world out there because when rubber meets the road, all these eloquent prayers, for example, that you hear in the church or around, you don't remember how to do that. And that's my testimony too in my journey. You know, I had a journey. And when, when things were crumbling, I couldn't say a sentence prayer constructively. And it's not because I had not studied. So we ought to, as it said earlier, make sure that prayer and fasting, um, implementing faith in our lives and obedience to the Lord becomes a lifestyle. Because when we are in trouble, you can't just pray the way you ought to pray. And I thank God that he knows the groanings of our hearts and, and all that. And secondly, <coughs> evangelism be be begins at home. Amen. Amen. And we, we cannot reach anyone else the best way possible until we have leveled the ground in our first candidates that the Lord gives to us in our homes. And so I'm encouraging the church for us to do the best we can to look in our inner circles and see where we personally can improve that the Lord can use us Amen. to tell others. And then we extend to this circles externally to the family yeah. to ensure we tell them that Jesus saves. We, we call it Samaria. And then, and then the other. Uh, so Patrick, I, I didn't do a great job today moderating the time. So okay. you got yeah, shy of, of, of uh, 10 minutes here. About. Okay. No, no problem. It's the word of God. Amen. Yes. So um, on Mondays, we're looking at at death's door, at death's door. And um, this word is one that many people fear, many of us fear, if not all, okay? And um, to start off the lesson, you know, I, um, I looked at um, this guy, is um, Charles Spurgeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, um, he was a British um, evangelist. And in his latter days, he, his body was diseased. So he was suffering and... I just want to share one of his quotes with us. He says that the best moment in a Christian's life is his last one. Why? Because it is the one that is nearest to heaven. Mm. When you're about to take your last breath. Mm. He's saying that should be the best moment in our lives as Christians. Because, you know, we are nearest to heaven. Because when that breath goes, the next thing we know is that trumpet sound. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing that we, we are going to face, God. Right? So, um, we see here, David and the other psalmist, how they dealt with death. I hope that we, um, we took some time to read these, um, these scriptures. Psalm 41, 1 through 4. Psalm 88, 3 through 12. And Psalm 102, 3 through 5, 11, 23, and 24. Okay. Now, we see here, for one, David, he saw his sin. He dealt with his sin as though he's facing death. That's, how, that's what came to me. That's what I saw here. He was, he was agonizing over his sin, right? And it brought him to that point as if he was at death's door. And the other psalmist, right? We see how they dealt with death, right? Look at it, Lord. If I die, I won't be able to praise you. What good am I when I'm dead? Right? I'm alive. I can praise you. I can glorify you. Right? What I want to share with us is that Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen. And like Sister Foster says, we need to personalize these studies. Take them for ourselves. How can I apply this to my life? We are all going through dark circumstances. Nobody's life in here is looking like the clothes we put on. That's right. Everybody has some dark cloud, yeah. right? And if you're not there yet, trust me, it is coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So how do, we, how do we deal with it? Okay? We have to take the word 
of the Lord for what it is. In, um, sorry, thoughts from the Mount of Blessings. I just want to share with you. It says the Savior's words have a message of comfort to those who are suffering affliction or bereavement or sorrows do not spring out of the ground. Remember, we serve a sovereign God. He's in control. God does not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. When he permits trials and afflictions, it is for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. So, Hebrews 12, verse 10. If received in faith, the trial that seems so bitter and hard to bear will prove a blessing. Okay? The cruel blow that blights the joys of earth will be the means of turning our eyes to heaven. How many there are who would have never known Jesus had not sorrow led them to seek him for mm. comfort? Okay? So, mm. the trials of life, they are... Trials of life are God's workmen to remove the impurities. Sorry. The trials of life are God's workmen to remove the impurities and roughness from our character. Ace deals with gold. They're hewing, they're scoring, and chiseling, they're burnishing, and polishing is a painful process. It is hard to be pressed down to the grinding wheel, but the stone is brought forth, prepared to fill its place in the heavenly temple. Now, like I mentioned Ace, he's not going to waste his time on a piece of material if he does not see the potential in it. It's the same thing with God and us. Whenever we are going through our situations, he has a plan, a purpose for our lives. Now, many of us, like the Israelites, they brought their condition upon themselves. Um, we have example. Job, he was innocent, but God had a plan, right? It was to glorify God. So right now, some of us, we are going through illnesses, and they could be a result of our own doings, right? So when we get in these situations, we need to search our lives and see if there are things in there that we need to change. Mm. And in, most importantly, when we are at death's door, we need to make peace with God. The person who does not know God does not know how to deal with, um, with trials and um, circum um, circumstances, those um, difficulties. But those of us who know God, we have to deal with them differently. Right? right. So for right. those of us today who are going through our battles, whatever forms they come in, just remember... God is in control. When this situation comes, in case you're close to him, draw closer to him. Please. Jesus had to pray for strength when the pressures of sin reached him. Right? He had that connection with his father. And he prayed. He cried out to God. Right? When the, the pressure reached him. And it's an example for us. We need to do the same thing. And I'll just flow into um, Tuesdays. Where is God? Right? Talking about darkness. We all have um, times when, you know, we are by ourselves. We're calling out to God. And it's like he's not hearing us. Right? The wilderness experience. The isolation. Wilderness. Yeah, isolation. You're by yourself. Just like the, um, the sparrow on top, out of his nest, on top the roof. Right? Many of us, it could be sickness, right? Many of us know what it is to have, I mean, terminal illness or, you know, various sickness. Some of us, a loss of loved ones. It is very common among us. Broken relationships, loss of employment. You're looking at losing your house, right? And you're crying out to God. Where is God, right? But I want to assure us, that God is right there. He promised us that he would never leave us. Mm. He would never forsake us. God is right here with us. So, if all that I've been saying, nothing um, stuck with you, just remember, 
God is good. God will not forsake you. God is waiting for your prayers of faith. God will not forsake you. And God will not fail you. And remember, most importantly, God is our loving Heavenly Father. And just pray His promises to Him. He's waiting for you to remind Him of them. Not that He doesn't know. But we have to cry out to Him. We have the examples here. Cry out to God during His apparent silence. He wants us to be genuine. He wants us to get real with Him. Confess our sins. We, we saw it here. You know, just confess your sins to Him. Get real with Him. And He will come through for you. Brother Mike. Amen. Amen. Wow, Amen. what a shot. <laughs> and to the point, yeah, we are running wow. low on time. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, you, 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 made, you made a reference to Job, and I, it, 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 one of my favorite reads is the book of Job. Um, and Job never got an answer. No. Job, no, Christ, God did not come down and say, well, hey, Job, let me explain to you what really happened. He no. never got that. But what he did get from God was, look at what I have done. Exactly. Where were you when I was doing A, B, C, D, E, when I was putting everything in place? And so Job gets the, if, the relief, if you want to call it that, of that God is asking him, trust in me. Yes. Trust me. So the memory text, I always like to come back to the memory text because it, it's what kind of brings the lesson, the gels the lesson. Yeah. And it's how can we sing the Lord's song? What is the Lord's song? That is the question we should be asking. What is the Lord's song in this strange land? Does anybody know what's the Lord's song? Well, let me tell you. You will find it in the Psalms. <laughs> if go to Psalm 34 in, or Psalm um, 9. In Psalm 9, listen to what the psalmist writes. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. That's the Lord's Let's song. Let's say amen. Amen. That's the Lord's amen. song. And, <laughs> and that is what the, the psalmist in this whole lesson, if you, if you look at the topics throughout the week, mm -hmm. um, it starts with the days of evil, at death's door, where is God? Has the promise failed forevermore? And Thursday, let us least, least the righteous be tempted. All of these are actually painting this mosaic print of life today life today so to, you said let's make it practical you said let's make it practical that's the that's the general idea of the study let us make it practical for us today so the psalmist is concerned in psalm 77 he's worried and he questions where is god in all of this in the midst of all of these struggles in the midst of all of these trials that we're going through where is god is his name being disreputed? And we know, he says, you know, we know that we are responsible for that because we have not lived the life that we should. We have not lifted God up. And so you said about, let us be this light. And we are supposed to be a light. In, um, in, um, in Isaiah 50, he talks about being this light, kindling this fire so that it, it, it can be seen. And so God is saying to us, you know, as the Psalms were written, what, 2,000 plus years ago, mm -hmm. but they're very relevant for us today. Yes. Very relevant. And um, I've never seen the, psalm in this, the Psalms in this light until we came up to this study. I've always just read it as a, a comforting word. Yeah. But it's more than that. It actually speaks to the condition of God's people mm -hmm. today. We fear, God, where is my God? There's death around me. We've lost loved ones. We've, some of us have been hospitalized. Mm -hmm. We've had to deal with pain and sickness. And, and so there, there is no special place in this world for the believer that precludes him or protects him from being part of this sinful environment. We're part of it. Right. So what makes this different for us? 
What is going to make this, if we know that death is at the door it, and it's, it can touch any one of us, there's nothing, there's no sound that we can see that will prevent that. Mm -hmm. There's no scripture we can read that will prevent that or disease. It's the environment. Mm -hmm. And so we're all susceptible to being part of this. So what makes it different for us as believers? We have to sing the Lord's song mm -hmm. in a strange land. Amen. And the strange land doesn't necessarily mean that, that well... I guess hypothetically we are foreigners in a strange <laughs> land. We've all migrated here from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But it's more than that. It's the condition of the world today Correct. is a strange That's land. Right. Yes, That's right. It's not what God intended. And so we now are caught within between a rock and a hard place, if I can use that term. Because we are supposed to be representing, or we're supposed to be flying the banner of God that says, you know, this is who the Lord is. We worship him, we give him praises to, for, under what, all conditions, all circumstances. But do we really do that? Or, or, it's, it's as the foster said, it, there's sometimes that she couldn't put a verse, a sentence together in the midst of her storm that, would, that said something. But her heart was singing songs, the Lord's song. Because he feels our pain and our sorrow. So right. there is nothing that protects us from this world but God. Amen. And I like that phrase. And Sister Morales will agree with me. Mm -hmm. But God. Mm -hmm. It is only he who can take us through these storms. It is only he who can protect us. And so that is why the psalmist is saying, where is my God? In the midst of all of this, I am crying out. He says, I am, my mouth is so dry that my tongue is sticking to my palate. I cannot utter words to describe my condition. Look at Job. Job's condition was dire. And in the midst of all of it, he says, you know what? I'm not able to see the beginning from the end in this case, and none of us are really. But he held true to what he believed. So where's the question is, what do you believe? Do you truly believe that God is able to save? And if you believe that, then you should be empowered to know that in the midst of all of this turmoil, there is a God that loves, that cares, and you've, all of us have very iterated the same thing, that, mm -hmm. that cares for each one of us. He says in the days here, it says here, um, days of trouble must be days of prayer. Yes. Those that are under trouble of mind must pray it away. When we remember God, it was only divine justice and wrath. So the whole concept of, well, the psalmist says, is only when I went into the sanctuary, mm -hmm. I understood this. Yes. And, and so this is key now. The young person today, let's, let's be real. Mm -hmm. How does that young person today understand the concept of going into the sanctuary and understanding why the world is how it is today. The only way is to understand the gift of salvation, mm -hmm. to understand what God has done, and the plan, and it's written in his word, this is the plan. This is how things are going to unfold. So when you okay, step into the sanctuary, you actually see the evidence of God's goodness towards us. And he says, don't fret about what the world is offering out there. Yes, the glamour people out there, who the, the, mu the, the music moguls, the billionaires. And look, if you look at social media today, they're all in, they're, their whole life is upset it's, right it's now. Messy. Because it, things have been brought to light that none of us really knew. But it shows you that do not envy the wicked. Right. And do not be jealous of what they have. You don't know how it was acquired. You don't know what they've been through. But keep your eyes on God. Amen. And he will direct your path regardless of what you're going through. That's a tough one to swallow. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one to swallow, especially where you don't know where the rent money is coming from. <laughs> yeah. You don't know if you're going to get that job you applied for. You're in the hospital with a disease that is life-threatening, but you're trusting in God. Just... Last week, a week ago or two, we buried a very a close member of my family. Young, 49-year-old, female, wow. Wow. succumbed to the evils of this world. And so there is no, right now, death is, is no disparity of, who, of age. They're dying young, they're dying old. In the midst of all of this darkness around us, where do we find the courage 
to see I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah, but, you know, um, during these um, tough times or trying times, this is when we um, develop our, our trust, our faith. You know, this is the opportunity for us to grow our faith, to grow in God. Because if we could see him, at, if we could see him, there would be no need for our faith. You think about it. You know, I was watching a broadcast last night about the 1844 and the, the time frame from, you know, the, that, the, that, 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 prof, that prophetic timeline. And the author was saying that if, if we had understood what the Day of Atonement meant in 1844, Christ would have long come yeah. to this earth. Oh, okay. sure. And the end would have already taken. But he says, you know what it is? We, the Day of Atonement was what? Was one day. Right. It was a one day affair. Yeah. Yeah. So we keep seeing that we're living in this antitypical Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. It was a one day. So look at 1844 to now. To look at God's patience. And he's saying to us, I'm waiting on you. I've yes. done everything I have to do. I'm waiting on you now to do your part <laughs> so that we can now make this happen. You, yeah, yeah. In, in the Day of Atonement too, there was a part to play of the people. Yeah. So God is willing to, in the Day of Atonement to do his part. He's done his part. Are you or have we done, done our, part our part in afflicting our souls? That is what yeah. we are to do, afflict our souls. We are to now take ourselves and follow the Lamb wherever he what goes. So if he's in the most holy place, are we living most holy lives? Right? So there's things that this church was taught that we need to bring and incorporate in our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And our lifestyle is a witness to this world. So in the anti-typical day of atonement, God's forbearance and mercy is, is being very long-suffering with long. us. Because he's only waiting on his people to finish a work. Yeah. And our work includes bringing others in through our lifestyle. That's why yeah. we, in, in hastening the Lord's coming, we are delaying the Lord's coming. Yeah. Because we're finding every excuse and we're being caught in every distraction. I want to piggyback on something you said, uh, um, brother. I, and I know you're, you're, you've got a, a few minutes left, if you don't mind. No, no, no. Go right yeah, ahead. Yeah? Go right okay. ahead. We can't lose sight because you talked about um, the young people. And, and one of the things they need to understand was, was, was salvation and so forth. I also want to add to that, or to what you said, was they also need to understand the great controversy. Well, yes. yes. Yeah, also the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Mm -hmm. That's an important part because I will tell you, you for right. me, for mm -hmm. me, um, as accepting Christianity for, for a very long time. But once I began through learning, through Adventism, this great controversy is how I was able to like go to the other level of understanding. Salvation. Yes. And why yeah. these evils that come before, why at death's door? You know, where is God? You know, has you know, all these things but the great controversy is what was able to open that window to me and understand. And what that does, it stops the murmuring, stops the complaining. You know, because evil's gonna be all around us. Sin is going to inhabit around us, but sin doesn't have to have dominion over me. Because when I take on those attributes, guess what? Sin has dominion over me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I stop that and I let this mind be me, which was in Christ Jesus, I'm reflecting the light to the world that, that I am a Christian. That's important because the reality is we are vindicating the character of God. The great controversy is about vindicating the character of God through his saints. And one of the, the, the individuals that was magnified in the Bible is Job. Job was a lesson of the great controversy. Though all these things befall mm -hmm. me, I will not curse God. I will, I will not complain. Maybe my spouse will, you know, but I won't. That's eventually, it's a little mini picture of the great God. But it is interesting what you're saying because in the, 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 the story of Job, as much as Job remained focused, look at everything around him, yes. his wife, his friends, everybody was like, man, no, this is not, you did something, you sinned, you must have messed up. He remained. And so to, in reality today, 
we're going to have the same problem. Mm -hmm. Because the world is telling us, it's actually saying, where is your God? You've been saying he's coming for how long now? You've been saying all these things about God. And look, you die just like me. You suffer just like me. You go through these, these periods of your life where there is pain, there is suffering, there is anguish. So what makes you different from me? The only thing is you claim that you have a God. But it's more than just a claim, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle. Yes. It's believing in something we don't see, feel, touch, or smell. And that's faith. Believing in a God who has promised us. You're not going to see this. It's not evident. The world is, the world, I mean, the world is based on evidence. Empirical, scientific, what have you. Mm -hmm. We have the evidence and it lines up. Yeah. Then now the word of God is saying, believe on faith. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a history that can tell you, hey, these things have happened. So based on what you've seen in the past and you apply it to today, you can see, well, okay, based on the empirical evidence, the historical evidence, there is enough for me to believe in God. There is enough in the word for me to say, well, let me, let me try this Jesus thing out a bit and see what happens. But if we don't as believers stand up, who will? Mm -hmm. And so it comes down to us. Christ is saying, you say we can't leave the great controversy out of salvation. The two, that's the whole, the whole concept. But the, the, the last comment that I would like to make is taken from, um, is taken from <coughs> Ellen G. White's writing testimonies for the church. She says, likewise, we are to follow the same examples. Summon all of your powers to look up, not down. At your, in, at your difficulties, then you will never faint by the way. You will soon see Jesus behind the clouds, reaching out his hand to help you. Like Sister was saying, in the darkness, he's working it out. You're not, you don't see it, but he's working it out. You will soon see Jesus behind the clouds, reaching his hand to help you. And all you have to do is to give him your hand hmm. in simple faith. And let him lead you. As you become trustful, you will, through faith in Jesus, become hopeful. Amen. Wow. And so we, we, can't, we cannot take that away or, or discount um, all what has, God has done for us. He's done everything possible to save us. Now it's up to us. Do we believe it? Do we accept it? Do we want it? Do we cherish it? And if we do, then our life, I'm not saying you're not going to have pain, suffering, and sorrows. That's part of the world we live in. We can't get away from that. But if your focus is on this world, then yeah, you will be lost. Yeah. We have to have something more to look forward to. And that's what, that's what the whole message of the sanctuary is. And you said it. Abraham, all of these, by faith, they didn't see the promise. No. But by faith, they went to their grave knowing that there is something more that God has promised each one of us. Right. Pen of Inspiration says, my closing thoughts, the Lord's merciful kindness is great towards us. He will never leave nor forsake those who trust in him. My brethren and sisters, you who feel that you are entering upon a dark path and like the captives in Babylon must hang your harps upon the willows, let us make trial of cheerful songs. You may say, how can I sing with this darkness or this dark prospect before me, with this burden of sorrow or be and bereavement upon my soul? How can I sing? When we bring our petitions to the throne of grace, let us not forget to offer also anthems of thanksgiving. The eternal life of our Savior provides us with a constant cause for gratitude and praise. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I would like to just take this little minute here or so to welcome our visitors from Wakja. It's great to see your smiling faces. I see some of you now. You're smiling now that I say the word smile. And um, you have blessed our audience and, and prayerfully uh, we can bless you today with our worship service. Amen. I, I want to share with you um, from the great controversy as we close here. It says, nothing is more plainly taught in scripture than that God was in no wise responsible for the entrance of sin. Okay, and, I, and I, I wanted to make sure I make that statement so we understand it clearly as this is part of the great controversy. It says, there was no arbitrary withdrawal of divine grace, no deficiency in the divine government, 
that gave occasion for the uprising of, and rebellion. Sin is an intruder for those whose presence, for, those, for whose presence there is no reason can be given. It is mysterious, unaccountable. To excuse it is to defend it. It is the outworking of a principle at war with the great law of love, which is the foundation of divine government. We can't explain sin. If we try to explain it, um, it's giving an excuse. But sin is part, is part of the great controversy, and it's part of the battle. As Elder Felix brought up about how God extends his hands, when we extend our hand back, we're dying to self. We're willing to put away the murmuring. We're willing to, to put away the complaining. And if we clasp hands with God, we're clasping hands with the character of God. And therefore, his outflowing spirit pours out to us. <clears throat> so though we are surrounded by even evil surmising and evil that, that befalls us day by day, when we quench, when we quench the evil thoughts that comes out of our mouth and that comes out of our mind, you know, we actually are drawing closer to God. There, there's, there's a saying, um, Sister White would say, silence is golden. Mm. There are times that reality, the three little words, is, is actually very powerful. It's actually mm. very powerful. So I pray that as we went through this lesson today about um, singing that song, right? Singing this song in this strange land. Let us look at what redemption offers us. Okay, let us remember the promises God has um, and the plans that he has prepared for us, even a certain place in the heavenly abode. And that's what we should be focused on, preparing our heavenly state while we are here in the strange land. Friends, do you agree? Amen. That's something that we yeah. should do? Yes. Okay, prepare that place. So I pray that as you heard the words of God today and if you joined us in our Sabbath school lesson, that uh, you were blessed, and hopefully there were some changes that will be made in your life, as I know I'll, I know I continue to have to make changes in my life as well. And Brother Patrick, can you close us with prayer? Okay. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we are thankful unto you for this another beautiful Sabbath day. We are grateful for this opportunity whereby we could come to discuss your words. Father, we see your messages to us, and Lord, we do realize our shortfalls, and so we are asking you today, please to give us the heart, help us to live the lives, so that we'll be able to sing your songs at all times in this strange world. Lord, help us not to become, help us not to adopt this world, help us not to become comfortable in this world, help us to remember that we are just passing through. And so, Father, please help us to apply our hearts unto wisdom. We pray in your son's name. Amen. 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 God bless each and every one of you. Please join us back next Sabbath at 5. I'm sorry, at 10. Hey, everybody looked at me. <laughs> at, at, at 10 a.m., where we do our best to, to start sharply. We're going to look at the topic next week, I will arise. I will arise. I pray that you will rise and you will get up early and you will be here at 10 a.m. God bless you. Amen. Church plants can be a space where we can invite people to share their questions, doubts, and perspectives. A place to listen to their stories and experiences and show them respect and compassion. By doing this, we can build trust and friendship and demonstrate the love of Christ. Jonathan is the pastor of Cerro, a church plant he helped start in Madrid, Spain. He is also the associate director for the Global Mission Center for Secular and Post-Christian Mission. 
The goal of the center is to better understand secular and postmodern people and to help them live a real experience with God. They've discovered that people who may not feel comfortable in a traditional established church setting are often open to joining a new developing community that is friendly, authentic, and diverse. And today, uh, Spain is the most secularizing, uh, uh, he has the highest secularization ratio in Europe. And see, up to 60% of the people don't believe in, in God or at least don't, don't practice any religion at all. Sylvia's relationship with God had ups and downs from as far back as she could remember. Based on her childhood experience in a Christian school, she thought of God as strict, but she also questioned if there was more to him. So she started searching. I can't remember what I typed, but one day I was Googling and I found Sarah. And I went there on my own, and to my surprise, I felt really comfortable. I enjoyed the experience, and I started seeing God in a different light. I wanted to open that door again, to let Him come into my life again. I went from, I don't believe in you, to, this cannot be a coincidence. He was knocking on my door again. I started looking at Him in a different way. I wanted to know Him better, to rediscover Him through Zero, with no prejudices. This is something I have to thank my church, Sarah, for. She started uh, the relationship with us, and step by step, she got baptized uh, after two years. In Cerro, I feel loved, and that is something absolutely beautiful. To me, this is the main difference. With God, I used to feel judged, but now to me, God is just love. Sylvia is just one of the people whose life was transformed because of Cerro. While this community continues to grow, they are building a new space to facilitate more people and expand their services to help relieve societal issues. We don't want to, to just open on Sabbath. We want a center of influence that helps people with mental health. A cafe where we are going to sell vegan food and also vegetarian food and the, the, the revenues are going to support this uh, mental health for people who can't afford uh, mental health uh, therapies. Especially in, in Europe and, and I would say for the case of Spain, it's, it's uh, triple the, 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 the case of suicides in Spain after the COVID. Please pray for the members of Cerro as they serve with compassion and kindness. To learn more about church planting efforts such as Cerro, visit globalmissioncenters.org. Thank you for your prayers and support of Global Mission. Young people are less likely to forgive themselves for past mistakes, and that can take a toll in one's mental health. In a study of young, middle-aged, and older adults, failing to forgive oneself was associated with more psychological distress, such as feeling sad, nervous, restless, hopeless, and worthless, compared to those with high levels of self-forgiveness. And this was more prevalent with younger adults, 45 years old and younger, putting them at greater risk. That's a fact, but there's hope. The study found that older adults had higher levels of self-forgiveness, it seems as one ages, one becomes more accepting of one's own faults and less critical of oneself. We can start practicing self-forgiveness at any age, and parents can help even young kids by allowing room for failure. That may translate in less psychological distress to people at a younger age. So forgive yourself and live happier. Are you ready for some history-making news? The International Pathfinder Camporee is going west. In 2024, come play, learn, and worship at an exciting all-new location in beautiful Wyoming. 
Get ready for bigger and better campgrounds and facilities, new places to explore, and a whole new world of amazing off-site activities. We'll see you at the International Pathfinder Camporee in Gillette, Wyoming. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called, When the Crocodiles Missed Dinner. The memory verse is from Psalm 150, verse 6. It says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Today's message is we worship God when we thank Him for His protection. Have you ever found a really good hiding place when playing hide-and-go-seek? A place that no one else would think of looking? That was the kind of place that Moses' mother was looking for. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was worried. What can we do about these Israelites? He asked his advisors. There are too many of them, and they are so strong. They might even try to join with our enemies if there's a war and fight against us. It was finally agreed that Pharaoh should give an order. All Israelite baby boys should be killed. Jochebed and Amram were frightened. They did not want their baby to die, so they decided to hide him. For three months, they managed to hide baby Moses at home. But soon he began to make too much noise. Jochebed was afraid that the soldiers would find him. We'll put Moses in the river, said Jochebed. We'll put him in a basket covered with tar so that it will float. I will watch nearby and make sure nothing happens to the basket, Miriam, Moses' big sister, may have said. Jochebed carried her son to the river in his basket. She placed the basket into the water where the reeds grew so that the basket couldn't float away. Miriam watched the little basket to be sure her brother was safe inside, and Jochebed prayed that God would protect Moses. When Pharaoh's daughter came to the river to bathe, she saw the basket. What is that in the reeds? she asked her servants. Please, bring it to me. Soon the basket was delivered to the princess. She lifted the lid and looked inside, and baby Moses began to cry. The princess smiled and said, This is one of the Hebrew babies. I will not let him die like the rest. I will keep him and bring him up as my own son. Miriam heard. She hurried to the princess and asked, Would you like me to find a Hebrew woman to take care of him for you? Yes, please. That would be good, said the princess. Miriam ran quickly and got her mother. When Jochebed arrived, the princess smiled. Please, take this child and take care of him for me, she said. I will pay you well, and I will send for him when he is older. Jochebed was so happy. They could keep their baby, and they would even be paid for taking care of him. This is a miracle, declared Amram. God must have a plan for this baby. Yes, Jochebed replied. We will teach him everything we know about the God of heaven. He must know all about God before he goes to live with the princess. The princess left Moses with Jochebed, and all the years they had Moses, Amram and Jochebed taught him about God and about his people. But the day came when Moses had to move to the palace. Moses learned many things there, but he never forgot God. When Moses was forty years old, he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite. He became so angry that he killed the Egyptian. The next day Moses saw two Israelites fighting. He stepped between them and told them to stop. They turned to him and asked, Will you kill us too? 
Moses became frightened. He had done a terrible thing by killing the Egyptian, and Pharaoh might have him put to death because of it. So Moses ran away to the land of Midian. God was still with him and protected him. God had a special work for Moses to do. Time in the wilderness of Midian would help prepare Moses for that work. God watches over you too. Do you think He might have a plan for your life? Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. Audio is post produced by. We're not on yet. Now we are on. And again, I'll start off by saying, Happy Sabbath and welcome to our North Day service. Hey, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Thank you so much. And again, I want to tell Wagja, thank you so much for、um, worshiping with us today. And for those who are out there, I'm a very proud parent of two graduates from,、um, Willi- Wagja, from William A. Curlew Academy. And、um, again, I want to say, Repeat again for those who just joined. It is our Wednesday night prayer meeting needs your support.、Uh, we have, uh, um, and now my, now my brain is scattered. Now I got to go back through. I had, it, I had it lined up and it was working, you know, but now I'm going to start over and say, take a deep breath. Let's go again. It is、uh, our Wednesday night prayer meeting is on Zoom and the link is going to come up shortly to tell you how to join us. It is a very powerful time of the week where you get a chance to get, some, to get a reminder of how great God is, to study God's word. So, if, you are, if you're in need of a, worship, um, a midweek worship time, you can join us on,、uh, on our Zoom meetings. There i s a few, few things that we are doing in the church that we're, you know, our big thing with our youth is、uh, Gillette. Club is at full blast, and we have already we've,、uh, we've reserved our tickets. We're about to pay for them. We have that ready to go. We're now getting the tents ready. Now we're getting the food ready and everything else to prepare to go. And so, but we still need your support.、Uh, one of our fundraisers is Gillette. Go back a little bit because that one I'm losing my money hard. And we need more people to support because、um, this is our, our fundraiser is that if you start off at this weight, And if you were to stay at the same weight, you only have to contribute $3. If you gain weight, it's $5. Right? I, 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 I seem to know the $5 mark well. Right? But it's okay. It's okay. It takes some time. It takes some time to get, it, to get my groove on. But I'll, 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 I'll get to the $3 mark soon. And then after a while, you won't get any more money from me. All right? But、um, please, if, if, if you take a minute, it's kind of, I hope you can read it. But if,、um, if you want to t- take part in it, we, it's always open and you can just come in, weigh yourself. And I don't know why Janet's on it, but she's in it and she's doing well. 
She's doing well. She's, she's, she's leaving room for the rest of us to pay our, 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 to pay in. But um, that's one of our fundraisers. We have a car wash coming up that we're going to ask for you to come out again. Even if it's just to wash your feet or, hold your, um, or to eat some chips, please come out and give your support. We're going to be, um, is that coming up soon so I can know the date? Because my date, I can't remember the date right now. But anyway, there is lots of activities that are here at church. One of our big activities that um, are here is in the evening, our Bible study by Richard is going to, is at 5 o'clock, and I'm not certain, Christ in the shadows. So be here at 5 if you would like even more, power, uh, more reasons to uplift your relationship with God. And um, that is at 5 o'clock. Anything else I cannot remember offhand, but if not, raise, no hands are being raised. Again, welcome, and we thank you so much for coming out. And I hope you have, I know you'll be blessed. Wagjaw is here, and our kids are going to um, give God praise. And every time, that's always going to be a blessing. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, as we begin divine hour service. Dear grace and loving Father, we give thanks. We give thanks for the many blessings you have given us. These precious gifts are a reminder from heaven that you are that you have given us a task to nurture and develop and to give them the guidance that, to, to become followers of you. Their Father, as, we, as the service continues and the Sabbath continues, let us always be mindful to keep you foremost in our minds and our, in, our, in our hearts and that we will love others as you have loved us. In your name we pray, amen. Happy Sabbath. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Well, give him a round of applause for me. Okay, I, that is not good. The country I come from, we'll we say that is a finger, finger clap. Now, could you give me a real round of applause for Jesus today? Yes, yes. He has been good to us. All right, he has been good to us, and we are happy to worship him. We are going to sing our first selection, which is um, um, Marching to Zion. Marching to Zion. Come with the love.
we're marching one more day. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. march to zion we can't march to zion unless we have sought the lost one so we're going to seek the lost hymn 373 seeking the lost where do i have my men in the audience where are the men raise your hand we're going to need to hear you come in in the chorus
deep silence before you. Amen. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for waking us up this morning. I pray that as me and Tristan speak, that it will bless your people and that it will touch their hearts. I pray that they will leave. I pray that they will leave better and not the same as they came in. I pray that you will keep us in your presence and that you will cover us with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Please. Him, fifteen, my maker, I came. May the children please come up for children's story. children 
Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Today, I will be telling you guys a story about coals of fire. Daddy, Hello? Okay. Dad, this mean boy Lionel at my school, he pulls my hair, he calls me names, he pushes me around, and tomorrow when I see him, I'm going to fight him. Oh. Fight him. Dad said, when you're done fighting him, let me know so I can pick up the pieces. Pieces. How about you? I don't know that. Or old school. Who's introducing Tristan, Brandon, and Joshua, his sister? The other girls who, who went up to speak, please, going to the congregation are here to socialize. It's Sabbath. And it is church. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heat burning coals on his head. Romans 12, verse 20. I don't know, Dad. That seems a little dangerous, don't you think? No, Donovan. Just try, at least. So, boys and girls, it was the next morning, and Donovan went to school, and guess who he saw? Mean, mean Lionel. He was over there talking to his friends about how he ain't have no breakfast, how his mom woke him up early, she didn't make him no breakfast, and how hungry he was. So Donovan went over to him and asked him this. Do you want a piece of my sandwich? Boy, give me that sandwich. Is it good? Donovan said. Mm, it's all right, Lionel said. My mom found a new recipe on TikTok. Oh, you watch TikTok too? Yeah, I watch TikTok. You know who Desmond Dennis is? Yeah, I know who that is. Boys and girls, they talked and talked until Lionel asked them this. Oh, do you want a piece of the sandwich? Yeah, I have a piece of my own sandwich. Thank you. And boys and girls, they talked and talked all day. You could even say they were like best friends. So it was the end of the day, and Dad came to pick Do Donovan up. Donovan was really excited to tell him what happened at school today. Dad, I made a new friend today. Oh, really, Dad said. And what's this person's name? Lionel. Lionel? I thought you were going to fight him. What happened to there not being any pieces left? What happened to that? Well, Dad, I listened to you, and I used coals of fire. I'm very proud of you, Donovan, for doing that. You actually listen. And boys and girls, this is what I want you to remember. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Make good choices. Oh, bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you have done. Please bless us as we go today at church and bless us as we look at the other programs. Please bless these kids and anybody who is hurt or is going through anything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Jesus, oh, you may return to your seats. The children children of the world red and yellow black and white they are precious in his sight jesus loves the little children of the Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. This morning, we are honored to have Wadja, um staff, students, and um, the principal, and the parents, and everybody else from there coming to worship with us this morning. Amen. We welcome them. Yes. Just ask you to do us one favor, guys. Your seat here is reserved for you every Sabbath. 
they don't miss you over there. You come over here. We're delighted to have you. Welcome to the Northwest Day Church. Most of you have been here before, and you know we're the friendliest church in, in, in the world. A little bit more friendly than Maranatha. They're friendly. They're friendly. No, they're very friendly, but we're a little bit more. We're not going to give you first place now, okay? But we thank you so much for choosing to come and give us the service today. We are honored to know that we can make a contribution to Christian education, just on, not just on, um, on education Sabbath, but we are what is called a constituency church. And every month we forward a, a certain amount of uh, money towards the operation of the school over there. Now that's not enough. So we're going to ask as many people as possible, if you want to be sponsors of any program or students at the school, please see me or Uncle Joe or the treasurer. Well, better see me. You see me more often. And we can discuss this and see what additional stuff we can do financially to help the school. Now, schools are very hard to run. They're very expensive. And, um, you know, they sometimes run into financial problems. So we want to make sure that our children are well educated, that there is enough financial resources there to help them through. Now, I'm going to tell you this, that our schools charge a fee from our students, our parents, but it's not enough. And because, you remember now, government schools are funded by the government, and the students don't pay. But we have a product called Christian education that we have to sell to our constituency and support it by our parents. And those who are not parents, even if your children are grown, you know that the children of today are still yours, who will become the leaders in the church for tomorrow. Too many of them are leaving the church at early adolescent into late teens. And if we can do the best we can through Christian education to help them to learn more about Jesus, we believe that we can kind of stem the tide of that exodus of young people away from our church. Do you understand? So the responsibility falls on everybody, not just teachers, not just parents, but every member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And if you are not a member of the church, your contribution is amazingly welcome. I don't know if you have an online giving thing that you, they can call. Watson.com. All right, good. You're going to tell them in a moment. So let me welcome the staff, the students, parents, all to our church. And our, uh, our principal, a good friend of mine for I don't know how many years, forever, right? Okay. Um, Dr. Francis, and we're going to pass the program over to her, to her, and may God bless her and the staff and you all as we worship together today. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Sukai. Good morning, everybody. Now I see some smiles. Some of you are looking sad and you cheer up. God is here with us. Wow, he has done it all. Elder Sukai, he told you everything about Wagja, everything about Christian education. But we're just delighted as a school, William A. Curlew Junior Academy, we say Wagja, to be here worshiping with you. Thank you so much for the invitation. And indeed, we are delighted to be here. Uh, thank you so much. Um, all the elders, the leaders, and the members of this church for you. For you. Continue to support. Because after all, we are all in this together. Because we are training young people, not only for this earth, but for the kingdom of heaven. So take It's not a light thing. It's not a joke. Uh, we had students in the past from Northwest Dade. Jade is a proud, we, proud product of Watcha. And you see Jade there. Um, Thank you to the parents. And we're still looking for us to come. All right. And there are many other children here at this church that we would like to have the opportunity to reach. We have dedicated. In out somewhere else, but we decided to stay there to be as a 
support to the children. And at this time, I would like to introduce faculty and staff to you so you can see them. Faculty and staff, please stand. Dedicated workers for God. Dedicated. We are on one accord training your children, our children. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bless you. Parents who have children at Wagja presently and are here today. Committed parents. Thank you so much for bringing your children. The past students stand. I know Jade is here, and I think Mr. Anderson is a past student. His children are at now. Yes, yes, he's a past student. And I want the present students to stand. Present students, please stand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, youth. Thank you so much. All right, so um, as I said before, we are all in this together. It's God's school, it's your school, it's our school together. And we need to support our school because after all, education and redemption are one. We have a program coming up um, February 24, um, Brother Williams will receive tickets. We want you to support as best as possible. It's at Maranatha Fellowship Hall at 6 o'clock, February 24th. It's called Pageant of the Cultures. Okay. I was about to sit, but because we have a video, because I don't want to be long. I'm not following my scripts. I'm just speaking from the heart. You know something? Wagja means a lot to so many parents, to so many children, and we appreciate that. We had this year, um, last year, a tragedy in our family. Our school chair, uh, chair Mrs. Teslin Brown, passed away. She was a great support to Amen. the school from its inception. She was one of the foundation members for Wagja. And continue to pray for the family, Elder Brown, her siblings, and so forth, because we have suffered a great loss. And just yesterday, we had a little challenge at school. Joshua Ferguson, Ferguson, he got injured on the playground. I was in the hospital with his mom and his grandparents, and Joshua said he still wanted to come. And Joshua is here today. He will be introducing his sister who said the invocation and she will be giving us this, the, the message, one of the messages today. So those are members we have at Wagja. Those are children we have at Wagja. Those are faculty and staff that we have at Wagja. Very, very committed. So North please support us by sending your children coming there to help us you can read a story you can help the teachers in the cafeteria so they can get a little break away you can do so many things so we're counting on you we know that you're very very supportive god bless you all have a wonderful wonderful rest of the day. thank you
part of Wakcha. And Savina is an eighth grader who did the who did the um, children's story. She will be graduating for, from Wakja this year. So we wish all our eighth graders all the best. Thank you so much. God bless. Hello? Hello? Will the deacons please stand? Blue mic? Oh, thank you very much. Mm. It's time for offering. Good morning, church. Today's offering is for the local church budget. Before I call the offering, I would like to share a story with you. And his name, through the faith in his name, has made the men strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him. He, he has given him this perfect sound of sound soundness in the presence of you all. Acts 3 verse 16. In the book of Acts, Jesus' followers were given incredible power through Jesus to heal people. How amazing is that? Uh, the scriptures teach us about how all-powerful all powerful God who desires to work through us. I have found that God pl places people in my path to remind me of his powers. One time, a young, one time a young woman came to see me during my office hours. She did not come to discuss class assignments. She came looking for this God of miracles that I share in my community communication classes. Meeting after meeting, I was delighted to listen to her wrestle with her faith, and I was grateful to, to pray with her. Most of the time when we met, I just listened, and yet in our busy world, Listening to someone can be one of the greatest gifts you can give them. The woman has since graduated and left our university, but I know without a doubt that our meeting shared laughter and prayer allowed, a, allowed her to see the love of Christ more fully through, hmm, through having someone to learn on spiritually. Friends, Today we have the opportunity to give so that our local church can continues to be a blessing to those around us. And time for prayer. Lord, thank you for this Sabbath. As we are about to give back our tithe and offering, bless those who have give and those who didn't have to give. Bless us, and I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh 
Please stand for intercessory prayer. You can sit down. Thank you. Just making sure you're listening, church. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. May I extend an invitation for us to kneel if we so desire as we pray to the high and holy God, Jehovah God. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy toward us. We thank you for your keeping care. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who quickens our hearts so that we can be here with you today. I pray. Dear God, that as we come in your sanctuary, that self will be crucified, and your sweet Holy Spirit will saturate our minds so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray for the waiting congregation that we will be fed. I pray for our school. I pray for our community. I pray that your work that you have invited us to be a part of will grow from strength to strength. We know that we wrestle against principalities and powers of darkness. But we also know that you are the omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the omnipresent God. You have given us the victory. May you humble our hearts to claim it, trusting in you. And as we do so, dear God, I pray that we will shed the light that illuminates from you, will reflect through us. And people will come running to you. Pray for the speaker of the hour. Or the speakers. Dear God. Mine as they are. But you can use them mightily. So I pray that you will empower them right now. And I pray Lord. That at the end of this. This message for today. Hearts will be warmed. There will be new births for you. For those of us who have been walking with you, we will be strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Incline thy knee.
In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. The earth was empty and had no form. Darkness covered the ocean, and God's spirit was moving over the water. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, so he divided the light from the, from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. This was the first day. Then God said, let there be something to divide the water in two. So God made the air to divide the water in two. God named the air sky. Evening passed and morning came. This was the second day. Then God said, let the earth produce plants. Some plants will make grain for seeds. Others will make fruit with seeds in it. Every seed will produce more of its own kind of plant. And it happened. Evening passed and morning came. This was the third day. Then God said, let there be light in the sky to separate day from night. These lights will be used for signs, seasons, days, and years. So God made the two large lights. He made the brighter light to rule the day. He made the smaller light to rule the night. He also made the stars. Evening passed and morning came. This was the fourth day. Then God said, let the water be filled with living things and let birds fly in the air above the earth. So God created a large sea animals. He created every living thing that moves in the sea. The sea is filled with these th living things. Each one produced more of its own kind. God also made every bird that flies, and each bird produces more of its own kind. God saw that this was good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth be filled with animals and let each produce more of its own kind. Let there be tame animals and small crawling animals and wild animals and let each produce more of its kind. And it happened. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image and likeness and let them rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the tame animals, over all the earth, and over all the small crawling animals on the earth. So God created human beings in his image. In the image of God, he created them. He created them male and female. God said, look, I have given you all the plants that have grain for seeds, and I have given you all the trees whose fruits have seeds in them. They will be food for you. God looked at everything he had made, and it was very good. Evening passed, and morning came. This was the sixth day. So the sky, the earth, and all that filled them were finished. By the seventh day, God finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it a holy day. He made it holy because on that day, he rested. He rested from all the work that he had done in creating the world.
Christian. I believe in Christian. The person who gets wisdom is good to himself, and the one who has understanding will succeed. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 8. Whoever spends time with wise people will become wise, but whoever makes friends with fools will suffer. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Knowledge begins with respect for the Lord, but foolish people hate wisdom and discipline. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua. I am Joshua Ferguson, and I am a proud brother of Deja Ferguson. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'd like to present to you my sister, Deja. Deja is a fourth grade principal honorable student. She is very intelligent and creative. On our last presentation at this church, Deja was the one who presented the children's story. She is currently active in, in the church that we attend. My parents and parents are here. Uh, please like them to stand. Please pray for Disha as she presents this message. May, the, may this word be blessed.
Methodist Church. Please stand with me as we read our text found in Exodus 14:14. 14, 14. You will only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for waking us up this morning. I thank you for letting me have an opportunity to speak to your people, and I hope that my sermon will bless their hearts and that they will leave different and better and not the same as they came in. I pray that you will be in, in this place and move your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before I begin, I would like to ask the audience two questions. What do you think it means to be strong? What do you think it means to be strong? To lift weights, be strong. Okay. What do you? Okay. What do you think it means to be courageous? Okay. When people think of strength or the word strong, they automatically think of the gym, a relative, themselves, or even a superhero. When people think of courage, some think of self, an astronaut, activist, and so much more. Now. Everything I just listed all have one thing in common. They are all visible. If you don't get anything from today's sermon, understand this. Strength is not always visible. Take David, take David for example. The, the Bible did not describe him as someone who went to the gym or was bulky. Instead, we understood that his opponent was significantly bigger than him, yet David defeated Goliath. Now, let's test your courage. Can I have one volunteer to join me up front, please? Harmony. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself? Um, my name is Harmony Thompson. I'm 13 years old. <laughs> and I'm in third grade. Okay, okay. I will have a box, and you'll have to close your eyes, and you have to put your hand in the box, and you have to guess what it is. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? A pin, okay. Can she open her eyes now? <laughs> oh. Now, let's take a moment to talk about how you got this because God's got you. I'm going to take you back to the story of Daniel. Before I do so, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, relax. <laughs> now, turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, you too, relax. <laughs> As many of us know, Daniel was one of the three supervisors in charge of 120 governors during King Darius' time. He was great at what he did. Because of this, King Darius trusted him with more, the entire kingdom. Now, you know when the Lord elevates you, your enemies are not so far behind. So the other supervisors whispered and conspired against Daniel, aiming to take him down. As much as they searched, they could not find a thing to accuse him of. Daniel was trustworthy, far from lazy, and such an honest man. He had the attributes that most employers seek today. Who wouldn't want to work with a man like Daniel? I know if I were his boss, I would have given him more responsibilities as well. So after the supervisors had served Daniel for quite some time, they noticed he's a man of God, a prayer warrior. So the supervisors decided they test Daniel's God. They knew he and God 
were tight. I must say, they were betting putting off Daniel's legs instead of God's leg. So, the supervisors, governors, and governor's assistant all went to the King Darius to request for a change to be made to the law, commanding everyone to worship one God, that is, King Darius. The moment Daniel heard this, he ran to a source of strength and asked for help. Now, how many of you would run to God first when you're faced with challenges? No need to raise your hand, just be honest with yourself. Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Daniel see in trouble brewing, but he also know where his strength came from, so he immediately took it to God in prayer. Per usual, Daniel prayed three times a day. The Bible tells us that the same group of people see Daniel praying, and they decided to report back to King Darius. Now, church, keep in mind, Someone is always watching, so make every move count. When the king heard that Daniel was not obeying orders, he was upset and commanded Daniel to be thrown in the lion's den. A huge stone was placed over the opening of the lion's den, and a signet ring was used to put a special seal on the rock. They wanted to make sure he could not escape. Although the king agreed to this law and consequence, his conscience was spanking him. He was worried, could not sleep or eat that night. The next morning, King Darius reported back to the lion's den to see if Daniel was still alive. The king shouted, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, who you always worship, been able to save you from the lions? Daniel responded, found in Daniel 6, verse 22, My God sent his angel to close the lion's mouth. They have not hurt me, because my God knows I'm innocent. I never did anything wrong to you, my king. Verse 23 and 24 tells us that King Darius was very happy. He told his servant to lift Daniel out of the lion's den. So they lifted him out and did not find any injury to him. This was because Daniel had trusted in God. Then the king gave a command. The men who had accused Daniel were brought to the lion's den and thrown into it. The wives and children were also thrown into it. The lions grabbed them before they even hit the floor of the den and the lions crushed their bones. As you can see, church, Daniel fought on his knees. He did not rely on his muscles, nor did, we, nor did he not rely on his capabilities. He simply just trusted in God. Brothers and sisters, your strength and your courage should only come from God. The God of the universe will fight for you while you relax. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Today, I'll be introducing Tristan Bryant. He is a fifth grader in Wagja, William A. Curry Jr. Academy. He attends Maranatha SDA Church, and he's a principal honor roll student. My name is Brandon Bryant.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good, mo good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we will be talking about Joshua and being strong and courageous with God. First, a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for this church, Northwest Dade Seventh-day Adventist Church. We thank you for everybody here. We thank you for the transportation. We thank you for giving us food. We give, thank you for giving us clothes. We thank you for letting us be strong and courageous in your heart. And thank you for your might and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Today I want us to explore a powerful scripture that speaks to the core of our faith and challenges with God. So live a life marked by strength and courage. And courage. It's found in the book of Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Let's turn our attention to this encouraging and empowering verse. Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord our God is with you wherever you go. To truly appreciate Joshua 1 verse 9, we need to understand the context it was spoken from. Moses, the great leader of Israel, had passed away. And Joshua was tasked with leading the Israelites into, into the promised land. The challenges was enormous and the responsibility was weighty. In this pivotal moment, God speaks directly to Joshua, affirming his command, making a promise. A promise that echoes throughout the ages. The command to be strong and courageous is not a suggestion, it's a divine imperative. It's a call to embrace the strength that comes from relying on God's power and courage that trust that, that we trust in him. This is not a call to self-reliance, but a declaration to our strength. God anticipates t human tendencies to fear the unknown and, dis and to be discouraged. Why? Because the Lord is with us wherever we go. As believers, our confidence is not rooted in our abilities, but in the unwavering presence of our almighty God. The promise in Joshua 1 verse 9 is not confined to a specific time or situation. It transcends generations and circumstances. In our trials, uncertainties, and even victories, God promised God promises remain steadfast. We can draw strength and courage from the assurance that God, who was once with Joshua, is with us today. How can we apply the message of Joshua 1 verse 9 to our lives? It begins with a deep, abiding relationship with God. We must cultivate a life in, in prayer, immerse ourselves in his word. His guidance is in all things. As we surrender to his will, we will find the strength and courage needed to navigate the challenges of life. Dear brothers and sisters, let us take to heart the timeless words of Joshua 1 verse 9. In every step we take, let us be strong and courageous, not in our own might, but in the mighty presence of our God. May this verse be a source of inspiration comfort and empowerment as we journey through the various landscapes of life. Remember the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all richly. Amen. Please stand for our closing song. Oh my gosh, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Hello, hello? Green mic? Green mic? Hello? Hello? Yeah? Hello? 
Happy service. Noble Steve. Our closing song is He Lives. Hello. Good afternoon, church. This is what just song, so I need you to sing it like we do. I serve the risen Savior is in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always let me hear you he lives he lives christ jesus lives today he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way he lives he lives salvation to impart you
Yes, thank you, thank you. I want to say thank you to Tristan and Deja. Didn't they do such a phenomenal job? I mean, come on. This is what William A. Curlew Jr. Academy produces. Now, there's a problem that all I can say is Jade and her little brother came to our school. That means that all of these children should be registering at William A. Curley Jr. Academy for the next school year. Because this school year is almost over, so I should not just see Jade and her brother, but I should see more of you guys. And it's so good to see you, Jade, as one of my fellow students. And so let's bow our heads and pray. Oh, Mr. Ben, he was in the back, and the principal said we wanted to let you guys know the only male that teacher we have at our school is Mr. Ben. And we would like to uh, welcome him and his first watch a day. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes for closing prayer. Help me, Father, you're such an amazing God. And we thank you that today we learn that instead of us going to our friends and our family, that we should go to you first, Lord, that we should be prayer warriors, that we should have faith that anything that is happening in our lives will be answered because we're on our knees praying to you, that we learn to be strong and courageous, that you commanded us to be strong and to remember that you will fight our battles. We don't have to wait lift. We don't have to do all of those things. We just got to continue to be on our knees. We thank you, Lord, for Northwest State. We thank you, Lord, for allowing them to have us here. We thank you, Lord, for William A. Curlew Jr. Academy and where you've guided us all these years. Continue to strengthen these young people, Lord. They are battling so many things that we may have not battled in our lives, Lord. Continue to let them know how important it is to keep you first. And as we travel on these dangerous highways, we pray that we make it home safely. In Jesus' name I do pray, amen. amen. On behalf of Northwest State, we thank Watch Out for coming. We thank all the, par all the parents and the teachers for all the hard work you're doing. It is seen and is appreciated. We thank you for coming again. Please be seated and usher yourself out. And again, do not make this the only time you, uh, we see you again. We hope to see you soon. Have a blessed Sabbath. He lives as you go. Remember, He lives whenever you feel like you're about to die. He lives, He's always with us. Let's go. I serve the risen Savior, He's in the world today.
I've been 
So you got your heart broken too, and you hurt so bad you don't know what to do. And you think that you're the only one who's ever felt this way, but there was sure another one, another day, and he died of a broken. Just so sure that no one's ever hurt this bad before, but there was one who hurt this bad and even more, and he died of a broken heart. It broke for you and me. You know.
There's no